everybody, Sticks here with the Token Minorities, bringing you another episode of Sticks vs. the Top of the Ladder, and today I have another OU match after a very long while. Uh, this team I'm trying out is a team that I just made and have been tweaking a little bit here and there, and basically I wanted to try out Nita Queen and Mega Ampharos, so I decided to slap them on a team together and build a team around them. Unfortunately, this team is Hazards Week, so I've been doing a little bit of tweaking uh, to try to fix that problem. But anyway, this was one of the first battles I had with it, and it is against Bob the Bro, who has a very, very bulky team. That could be a real problem, but we will just go ahead and jump right into the match. He leads off with his Crocodile, actually predicting that I decided to lead with my Infernape because Crocodile is the only thing on his team save Blissey that can set up Stealth Rocks. And, well, Celebi can too, but I really think that this spot slot was best used on Crocodile. Plus, if Blissey or Celebi came in, I could immediately threaten them out with a close combat and U-turn respectively. But either way, right now I'm just going to go for the U-turn. Uh, I will let him get Rocks up. They don't really hurt my team too much. But he just decides to go into his Aloma Mola, and uh, right here I see that it is a Rocky Helmet, meaning that this is going to be a very annoying Aloma Mola. However, now I can just get a free switch into my Nidoqueen, I can set up my rocks, or immediately go for a Sludge Wave to hit anything on his team hard. Uh, I think that he's just going to go into his Blissey, so I decide to go for the Stealth Rock right there, as he does go for the nice play and knock off my Life Orb, and my Nidoqueen will not be hitting that hard anymore. Now I'm predicting the Scald or the switch into Blissey, so I decided to go into my Ampharos, who can take whatever uh, Blissey or Loma Mola wants to do to it. I even don't mind a burn because this is a Rest Talk Mega Ampharos, but now that Blissey's in, I really can't do anything. I just wanted to go ahead and Mega Evolve so I could have better bulk, and I'm just going to Volt Switch out and go right into my uh, Jirachi, that's right. Because I wanted to trick something on his team because nothing it looks like really wants a Choice Scarf. In fact, I don't think anything on his team is Choice Scarf. Crocodile is the only thing that could potentially be. And in which case, uh, I would just get another Choice Scarf and we could go from there. But as I said, I'm just going to go for the trick right here. As he does decide to bring in his Crobat, I guess wanting to get rid of my rocks. But this is great for me because Crobat was a problem, but now it is not because I can just scout whatever he wants to do, and I can U-turn out, I can go uh, set up my rocks again, forcing him to switch out or take a lot of damage. As he does go for the Defog right here, I'm just going to U-turn back into my Nidoqueen and set my rocks up, because if he wants to stay in and continually Defog, I can just keep nailing it with Ice Beam, I will eventually come out on top. But he does decide to switch out right now, go back into his Blissey, who will take little to nothing from my Nita Queen because this does not have Focus Blast, as I do just set up my rocks right here. Now I'm noticing that my Haxorus can 1 to 2 co everything on his team. In fact, I think the only thing that isn't O code is the Aloma Mola and potentially the Crocodile, depending on what set it is. Now, uh, I just decided to get a little bit of damage off on my, off on his Blissey, excuse me, just to scout out what he was going to do, and he decides to go for the Seismic Toss. Now, I bring in my Haxorus, and something on his team is going to die at this point, because Haxorus is going to destroy everything, and if the Crocodile is, if the Crocodile is Choice Scarfed, I would KO it outright. If it was not, I would outspeed and Tuco. But his Blissey just goes down, which was actually a fantastic thing for me because now I can just KO, I can uh, use my special attackers to break his team. As he does go into his Loma Mola, who is obviously tuco would by it, but unfortunately knocks off my Choice Band. And at this point, Haxorus has already punched a hole in his team. So I really don't see any need to uh, save it or keep it in, especially now that I've lost my choice ban. So I just decided to go for the Outrage again, get some damage off on something, maybe KO the Aloma Mola from there if he decided to stay in. But he goes into his Celebi, who is defensive, and I just hit myself in Confusion right here, and I will go down to the Leech Seed. I guess he was predicting the switch, I'm not sure. But 
Now, luckily, I can go into either my Jirachi or my Infernape or my Nidoqueen, which I do decide to go into because nothing on his team wants to take a Sludge Wave or an Ice Beam. And as it turns out, I outspeed the Celebi. I am running some solid speed investment on this Nidoqueen so I can outspeed certain things. But the Celebi goes down, which means even more special attack spamming. Unfortunately, he goes into his Nidoqueen, which I'm noticing is a bit of a problem and will definitely have to play around. Right here, I go into my Chesnut, predicting the Earth Power. Um, basically, I'm just going to be doing a bunch of pivot switching at this point, trying to get a good matchup against this Nidoking. And I'm going to double out into my Jirachi, predicting the Poison move. If he went for Earth Power again, I would have been in a lot of trouble. But Jirachi can take that easily. In fact, he takes it completely because Steel is immune. And unfortunately, because I tricked off the Black Sludge from that Crobat, I will be taking a little bit extra damage and right there I I just went for the flinch I just wanted to get some good damage off on that Needle King so it could be handled by uh, Infernape's Flare Blitz but right now I know he's gonna switch because he realizes that Needle, Queen, Needle King is such a big problem to my team and because I hate having uh, Black Sledge on me I'm just gonna trick predicting the switch as he goes into his Alomomola, which is beautiful for me, because I will be able to give that Alomomola Black Sludge, which decreases its uh, survivability a ton. And I also get a Rocky Helmet, which, I don't know, could come in handy if Crocodile wanted to go for a knockoff or something. But right here I go for the Iron Head, just trying to get a flinch. If I got one, I would have been able to take out the Alomomola next turn for sure. But uh, right here, there's really nothing I can do to keep it from getting its wish, so I just decide to switch out into my Mega Ampharos, as I really should have seen this coming. Uh, switches back out into his, or switches into his Crocodile. I was actually predicting that he would switch into Nido King right there to get its health back up. But now Crocodile is a bit of a problem. I think Ampharos can take an Earthquake, but I don't want to risk it just yet. Plus, my Chesnut is a great counter to Crocodile, really. And I want to save my Ampharos to try to, at full health to try to take an Earth Power and then nail Nido King with the Dragon Pulse if it comes down to that. But right here, Crocodile has no business staying in, so I can just go for some spikes right here to get a little bit of damage off and residual damage. But I know the switch is coming, and I thought he was going to go into Crobat, who I want to whittle down a lot. So I just decided to go for the Leech Seed, which actually gets me back up almost to full health uh, as I just decide to not play any more games and take out the Alomomola with a Wood Hammer. That way there will be no more wishing on that team and there will be no more health recovery at all. Unfortunately, Nido King is going to get all of its health back and he can just go for the safe Poison Jab now. The switch into Jirachi was very obvious right here. But I knew that because he had a lingering wish, that he would definitely just want to make a safe play and get back up to full health. So I knew that Jirachi would be a relatively safe play at this point. Uh, because while he will get back up to full health, I will still have a decent matchup right now. As I believe I'm just going to go for the Iron Head and maybe get a flinch off. But that damage was really all I needed. Because uh, Infernape takes it home from here. Flare Blitz KOs the Crobat and the, and the Neo King, and the Crocodile is taken out by close combat. However, I do recognize that the Crobat has been given a Choice Scarf my, by my Jirachi, so uh, Infernape cannot simply clean up at this point like I thought. But I need to keep my Ampharos at full health, so Brave Bird Spam will not win him the game. And as he goes into his Crocodile right now, just U-turn out, going to my Chesna, and right here I am deciding to set up a little bit more hazards because I am predicting this Crocodile to be choiced in some way looking that, at that damage. I would say choice banded, but either way I just set up one layer of spikes, I know he's going to want to go into his Crobat right here, so I just decide to Leech Seed to, again, wear it down to the point where I can just protect and leech seed stall and any one of my attacks will be able to KO him. Right here, I go for the spiky shield. I know that that was a very obvious play, 
but I wanted to scout whatever Crobat was going to do. If he was going to go for Brave Bird, I would go into Ampharos. If he was going to Defog, I was going to go into Infernape, and something on his team would die. Uh, makes a good play. Goes into his Needle King, and I'm just going to sack my Needle Queen at this point because it can't outspeed anything, and at this range it is KO'd by any attack on the uh, on his team. So Needle Queen goes down to an Earth Power, but now I can go into my Infernape and go for Flare Blitz, which will KO everything on his team at this point. He just decides to sack his Crocodile right here, which is a good play because it gets the Intimidate off on me. But Crocodile will go down to two, if not one. It is shown here that one is enough, which basically confirms my suspicion that the Crocodile was a uh, choice banded. But now we can go into his Crobat, and I really don't want to make a risky play and go in, and just go for a Flare Blitz predicting the Defog, because I have a perfect switch into Crobat right here in Ampharos, and Infernape is my only way of defeating that Nido King later, so I switch out as he just go, go for the Defog. And right here I have the game won, because I can just spam Dr Dragon Pulse, which will KO the Crobat. If he wants to switch his Nido King, it will KO that. But if he sacks his Crobat, nothing can outspeed my Infernape, and while he will maybe be able to KO the Ampharos, I will revenge kill with Infernape. As is revealed right here that Mega Ampharos actually takes a Life Orb uh, Earth Power from Nidoking. Now, considering that he also had Poison Jab, I wasn't sure of his investment, so I'm not sure how it would live a fully invested uh, special attack, or Earth Power anyway, but... Either way, that's the game. Looking at that guy's rating, he was at 1593, which was exactly number 50 and just at the cutoff to uh, make this video worthy. But uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, and this is Sticks, signing out. Why not? See you guys.